This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by GB Olympic hopeful Lewis Richardson. Lewis, how are you? Yeah, very good, thank you. Thanks for having me on. No, no, any time. Um, we last spoke nearly a year ago now, and it's been quite a kind of year to 18 months for you since winning the Olympic test event, what, back in October 2019? Um, it's been very up and down. Yeah. I mean, you, you can tell us more about it, but you... It didn't look like you were going to make the squad for the qualifier. Um, then an injury forced the middleweight rep to drop out. You went in, won your first fight in good fashion. And then the whole qualifier was called off because of COVID. And now it's looking to be rescheduled, hopefully um, next month. And hopefully the Olympics are still going to go ahead this summer. Just tell us kind of mentally, emotionally, how this long period has been for you. This, this, uh, literally, as you just said, Danny, it's been a crazy sort of 18 months. Um, lots of ups and you know p uh, potential downs and some of them have been downs but potential opportunities to, to grow in, in other ways than just performances um, as you said you know I, I had a, my breakthrough for GB was probably at the Olympic test event um, went out there for experience ended up winning the competition um, got moved up to podium again wasn't number one then as you said replaced um, I, I got offered the um, reserve spot after a good Kazakhstan training camp mm. The opportunity came. I, I rose to the occasion and performed fairly well in, in in the first qualifier. You know, I didn't really have any pressure, no expectation on me in that qualifier. It's only sort of that expectation of myself, I guess. Um, and the coaches believed in me as well. And you know, we we had a good little good little thing going on, I guess, it, heading into the qualifiers. And I, I felt in great shape. And I think that replicated in in my first performance. Um, and as you said, literally the the, the, the day I boxed, the the tournament got um, postponed. Um, and then who who could have possibly have written the script for the last twelve months, you know, and and heading on another for another six months? Um, it's been crazy, and yeah, as you said, lots of ups and downs. But um, for me, more, more ups and downs, um, more opportunities to to explore, I guess, life in in other aspects and in, improve as a person as well as an athlete. When you went into that um, first qualifier fight, were you aware of the fact it was likely to be shut down either that day or soon after? So heading into the event, I think in the build up to the qualifiers, we were just in our own little bubble and we just were so focused on those qualifiers. We didn't really didn't really watch too much of the news and didn't get caught up on any sort of, you know, talks that of, of these potential happenings. But um, again, even uh, even at the event, I still didn't really think too much of it. It was only really that there was such a quick turnaround between you know, all fans were allowed. Then the next day, no fans were allowed. And the next day, it was cancelled. Um, we had a team meeting. Uh, Rob called us for a team meeting on, on the floor um, of the hotel we were in. And, you know, 4 p.m. that day, um, he announced that it was going to get cancelled after that evening. So I, I, had, I had a fight coming up in probably about four or five hours' time. And I found out that it was, it was getting cancelled. But, you know, my main priority was still to, to get the job done that night. And, and, and we were able to execute it. How does that make you feel, though, kind of mentally, just before going into a fight, knowing that it's kind of, I suppose it's win or out anyway, because you'd be eliminated regardless, yeah. but knowing that it is just that fight, there's no kind of further thing, at least for a while. Yeah, I mean, we thought it was for, going to be for a couple of months. They said, oh, we've re re rescheduled in May and everything will go ahead, but... Um, yeah, with, with the build-up I'd had of a lot of uncertainty, it was just another one to add to the list, you know, for, for me personally. A lot of the other boys were in different situations, but it, yeah, for me, it was just, okay, you've got to deal with this, you've got to deal with it quick. I had a, had a quick chat with a couple of people and said, look, no, nothing changes, you know, you go in there and you get the job done tonight and and then that, and then we, you, you focus on whatever you can leading up towards the future. I mean, one one thing for me on a personal note is, I wanted to win that first fight because I wanted to secure my place within the next qualifier. Obviously, if I'd have lost that fight, um, then I, I don't know what position I, I may have been in, you know, within the squad and, and, and following on towards future competitions and, and other qualifiers. So, you know, secure, getting that win was a massive thing for me to sort of solidify my place as, as number one. And you're, what, two wins away now from making it on the plane to Tokyo, um, assuming all goes yeah. ahead and we'll talk about that in a bit. But, do you know who you've got next in the next qualifying round? Yeah, so I've got um, the, the Ukraine, the Kuzniak. Yeah. So, you know, we, we all know about him on the circuit. Who, who doesn't know about him? You know, he, he, he's on a great run of form and he, he's, he's unbeaten in a long time. But, you know, these, these people are there to be beaten. 
I've had a whole year to prepare for that. You know, people go into competitions having a day to prepare for him. You know, and you, we know it's going to be tough. We know it's going to be men- mentally and physically demanding. But I can prepare for that in the, in the best way I can, knowing exactly what's coming. Um, we can do all the video analysis and everything else. You know, whereas other people, if the draw's done in the day and you're boxing in that day, you know, you, it, it takes time to prepare for someone like that, and um, uh, mentally and physically. And, and I'm in a great position where I'm I'm able to. I'm, I've improved over the last twelve months. You know, he may not have. You know, I, I'm I'm in a development phase in my career and maybe he isn't you know so um it's if, if everything's in my advantage you know apart from obviously he will be favorite and and he, he has he, he deserves that that favor odds you know but we're, we're there to, to to rip the script up and, and do a job and are you back at gb now like monday to thursday and then going home at the weekends back in kind of full-time training yeah, I mean, um, went back in June, to be honest. So we've been up for a long time. I had a couple of weeks off in between and had a couple of training camps. I've been very fortunate um, to, have to to be able to travel and go to training camps. It's been a bit unlucky with competitions um, to being cancelled last minute and that, but just grateful we've been able to, to be up here and train, really. Um, especially this this third lockdown. Um, I think it could be challenging for a lot of people, you know, everyone's a bit sick of it. The weather's not good. It's post Christmas, you know, it, 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 could, it can be tough to sort of stay positive. Whereas we've been up here, we've, we've had structure and we've been able to train hard. And um, well, I've got something to aim towards, you know, obviously we've got qualifiers in April and we've got tournaments approaching very soon. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful we've been able to train up here. We've been staying up Monday to Fridays. I know originally, uh, normally it's Monday to Thursdays, but just getting an extra bit of training in up here because you, you know, we're limited to what we can do at home at the moment. Now, with the Olympics being delayed for a year and amateur boxing from a competition standpoint almost shut down for that period, did you start fielding offers from professional promoters? I mean, you don't have to name and shame them if you like, but <laughs> were there people approaching you trying to turn your head a little bit? Yeah, there, there were a few, um, relatively unknown, I guess, on the circuit still, but that would all change over the next 12 months, I believe. But um, I had a few people approach me, just put the feelers out, you know, to make make me aware of them and make make them aware of me, I guess. Um, I had a few a few interesting people follow me on Twitter, a few <laughs> few people um, drop into a message on Instagram and things like that. But, you know, my head, I feel like I'm pretty screwed on and um, and, and switched on to, to, to what's right to do right now. Um, as I said, I'm developing, I'm improving all the time. So when the time's right, we will go pro. But for me personally, there was no real no real decision to be made there because I had my eyes fully set on, on these games. Well, it's not just development as well, as important as that is. It's the financial aspect as well, because presumably once you go to Tokyo, if you do, your value goes up. If you medal in Tokyo, it goes up more. If you win the gold, I mean, you can write your own passage pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, exactly that, you know, and um, a lot, a lot of us boxers, we don't really come from a lot, so it's sort of it's it's nice to to be able to build that profile and and, and gain that sort of profile, and earn that respect to be able to not demand, but to be able to uh, get better offers, get better money, you know. Um, and I, I I feel like I will be good with my money, and I, I will I will try and distribute it in in the right ways and invest for the future and, and for my future family and, and, and things like that, you know. Um, but now you're 100% right. And I'm aware of that, you know. I see a lot of people around from around my way in Colchester, a lot of people try to go pro, but they've got no platform, you know. They've got they've got no no TV rights, no good deals. And it's just hard, you know. I don't want to be worrying about selling tickets and that. I want to be focused on my boxing career. Um, I want all that other side of the work to be done for me. Um, I want my boxing to come first and, and, and that's that. It must be helpful in that case that you you still live at home. You've got great family support because otherwise these promoters come along. They're dangling, you know, e- not easy money, but quick money in front of you rather than waiting for Tokyo, which is a year delayed now. But you're able yeah. to turn all that down because you're you're grounded and you're not you don't you're not desperate for the cash that's available. Yeah, exactly that, and 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 I guess desperation comes into it because you know we're on a we're on a wage up with GB, albeit we're not on a massive wage, but it's enough to get by. And you've got to think of it's not only the money we we receive off of UK sport; it's it's the services that are quite provided to us. You know, we've got a great support team around us. That if you're professional, you have to pay for all that. You know, you you don't get paid for. So yeah, you, your outgoings will be a lot more when you're pro. Okay, your incomes will be higher as well, but with GB it's, it's it's not too sad and, and pe- people think okay you, they're not on much and we're not on much but 
it's enough to get by and it's, it's enough to be able to focus fully on, on, on your dream. And we talked about the Olympics and, and whether it will go ahead. No one from the organising committee has suggested it won't at this stage, but there's been a lot of talk back and forth. I saw one of the organisers just this morning asking the new US president, Joe Biden, to make a public statement in favour of the Olympics going ahead because he felt that may sway ultimately the decision one way or the other. Are you in a position where you have to shut all that stuff out and just focus on you know, what you're doing because it could kind of creep in mentally? Yeah, definitely. You know, you can't read too much of the news and and it, even the positive stuff, you can't read too much of the positive stuff because there's, there's going to be as much negative stuff about it. As much as you've got to ignore that negative stuff, you just got to, well, you, you can ignore the positive stuff as well as you want because, you know, we can't control any of that. You know, we're not scientists. We, we don't know that. We know a lot more about the virus now than we did, but we, we don't know if we're going to be in a position to be able to uh, for it to be able to be hosted um, come July or not. But all, all I can do is, is focus on my training and focus on improving and, and developing. Um, and, and as I said, as an athlete and as a person, I recently started university in September as well. And the plan was originally was to, to, to for the games to go ahead last summer and then start university fresh in the September. Um, but obviously the, the games got delayed and I had the option, OK, do I do I delay university for another year or, or do I crack on with it? And I thought, you know what, I'm I'm in a great position and I've got a great support staff around me with GB, with home, with fa- family and friends, you know, and I feel like, yeah, I just thought I'm going to go for it here. And, you know, so far, so good. I, it's, it's a distraction, but it's a positive distraction, you know. Them times when you're resting and you're bored at home, it, okay, I'm gonna sw- I'm gonna switch it my my attention to to university work and and focus on a positive rather than just sitting there and and, and doing not a lot basically. So is it all remote learning presumably because you're at GB most of the week, of course. Yeah, so so I'm actually I actually go to Sheffield Hallam University. Um, yeah. The first two weeks back in September was 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 going in into um, lectures, um, like actually being there, and then. And then it all got switched online. Um, for me, it, it works pretty well because I'm able to. Uh, it just just cuts a bit of time out with the travel um, to and from, really. And I'm able to get all my training up Sheffield and attend my lectures live. And then on the weekends, when I've got a bit of time off, I'm able to to get a bit of work done. You know, rather than well, there's nothing else to do at the moment, so it's it's, it's come at a, a good time for me, really. What What are you studying? Um, I'm doing a master's in sport business management. So, um, you know, and, and this, this could help me in my professional game, just understanding the process, um, the procedures a little bit more and um, just being aware of my surroundings, aware of what people I need around me and, you know, what might, what, what might work well and what, what may, may not sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I may never need to use it. You know, I might, I might absolutely smash it with boxing. I may never need to use it, but at 35, I'll retire. And then, and then what? Okay, I live, I live a good life, but... I'd still like to give something back to society and 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 improve myself and and improve the people around me. I imagine it will be quite valuable during your boxing career as well. Definitely, yeah, definitely. You know, um, even potentially being able to manage yourself or have have a strong input um, w- with your managerial team. You know, um, understanding the process a little bit more and um, just making sure. You know, professional boxing is a business, and I don't want to be mugged off, and I don't want to be be told short and. Hopefully that will put me in a position to not be. Great stuff. We wish you, obviously, the very best of luck in the qualifier and and hopefully the Olympics do go ahead as planned this time um, in July. Just before I let you go, we've asked you this before, but let people out there know how they can find you on social media. So Lewis J. Rich on Twitter and Instagram, and I've got a Facebook page, um, Team GB, Lewis Richardson Boxer. Um, Have a look, just just follow, have um, have a little share. And yeah, just just enjoy the journey with me, I guess. Um, it's been exciting last 18 months, so who knows what the next 12 could bring and, and, and so on in professional ranks. Great stuff. All right, mate. Well, have a good day and um, yeah, best of yeah, luck and we'll catch that. up again hopefully after the qualifier. Thanks a lot, Danny. Appreciate that and um, appreciate you getting back to me so quick as well. So uh, thanks a lot, mate, mate and take care. And yeah, yeah. lovely. Bye-bye, mate.